that you can do. I would probably say that I don't have the quality to do that. Good morning, everyone. How are you? Hey, Daryl. Hey, Tom. Nice to see you. Hey, Michael's iPhone. Cool. Good morning. I, you guys are out and about and you're getting ready to start your day. Uh, I'm going to share a little tip ab around learning. And this is what I used to share um, when I taught a lot of live classes, right? In the front of the room. The people that sit in the front of a classroom actually learn 10% more than the people that sit in the back, right? It's just the nature of being so close to the experience that you actually pay more attention. And I know all of you are starting your day, you're busy, you're dropping your kids off for school. On future opportunities, I would highly recommend if you have an opportunity to learn, to kind of clear your calendar, turn on your Zoom, take out your notes, because you will absorb and learn way more by having the ability. And now listen, this is not a judgment thing. This is a tip. This is a tip that if you want to absorb more from the trainings you're on, see if it's possible to clear your calendar and be present. As I just said, the best way is to actually take notes. So I, I have handouts for the class that I'm going to do today. And yet I know the best way for you to learn is to take notes. So I'm not sending the handouts or sharing the hand handouts. Nothing of what I'm going to share is so complex that you couldn't jot down a couple of notes and be able to get that information. So today we're going to talk about video. I feel like I'm a broken record. I'm a broken record. I've been encouraging, which is a really nice word. I've been encouraging agents to make video for 10 years. For 10 years, the National Association of Realtors asked buyers and sellers what's important to them in the agent they use. And for over 10 years, video has been on that list. And yet if you go and ask or you look at the data of the amount of agents that make videos consistently, it's probably less than 20%. And when I talk to agents all the time, they're like, oh, how do I differentiate myself? That is a simple, easy way to start to differentiating yourself from other realtors is making video by a show of hand. And by the way, this is an opportunity to grow. This isn't for judgment. How many of you make videos consistently? And I'm going to say consistently is at least two a month. Raise your hand real quick and I'm going to scroll through. So about a little bit more than 20% on this page. Let me just scroll hands up. Not enough people on the next page, not enough people on the next page. So about 20%. So it's probably right in alignment with what I know. However, if you want to differentiate yourself, making video is the way you can do it. And I know as soon as I say that, here's what your brain says. I don't like the way I look on video and I don't like the way I sound and I don't know what to say. And when I do, it just sounds like I'm an idiot. True. All that is true. However, you didn't know how to sell real estate, but you overcame all those fears to actually do it. Commission only, inconsistent, you, you, you know, you overcame those challenges to start a, a career in real estate. I'm pretty sure you can overcome those challenges of video. Um, number one, hate to tell you, but you actually look that way. So you say you hate the way you look on video. When your clients meet you, they're going to find out. <laughs> so you can get over that, right? You look how you look, right? They're, they're, they're going to, I want to lose weight. I want, well, guess what? When your clients meet you, this is how you look. So you got to let that one go. You don't like the way you sound. Um, a really good microphone can actually improve that. And yet, recordings of our voices, the way you sound on video is actually the way we hear you. It's not the way you hear your voice in your head because it's reverberating differently, right? It's coming out this way, but sound is also coming this way and it's coming into your ear. So you do sound to all of us like your video. 
So you cannot like it because it's not familiar, but let that go, let it go. It doesn't matter. Now, you don't know what to say. That's what we're going to talk about today. That's we're gonna, what we're going to talk about today. The one caveat is whenever you start something new, give yourself permission to do it poorly. The first 10 videos you make, if you don't want to, don't send them out anywhere. But get on camera, process it, record it, upload it to either your computer or YouTube as a hidden video. Maybe email it to your friend and ask for some critiques. You know what my kids say? They still say it. Mom, your video you is not you. I don't know what you're doing when you're doing video, but it's not you. So my partner, Curtis, and I um, make videos together because each of us becomes more authentic when we're together on a video. We have more what we would call conversational style when we're making, when we're making these videos together, right? That we're, it's more like we normally are. But if I'm in a video, if I'm in a camera myself, I get like journalism, Debbie. Hi, I'm Debbie. And today we're going to talk about, I don't know what it is. And I, I, I think it's getting better. And yet I still make them, right? I, I make them anyways, because in order to get better at something, you have to do it. Over. You have to get your reps in. Um, and I'm sorry, but the internet today is really valuing authentic video. They really, gone are those polished quaffed um, they're not gone if you have a luxury home you should probably do a really fancy video um but people want to see people that are real we leave mistakes in our video we trip over our words in our video we laugh in our video because um people want to see real people and the more you do it the better you're going to get so i want to talk about the three kinds of experts because you're all feeling like i can't do this because i'm not an expert i'm too new let me talk about the three kind of experts there are. There are the actual experts, the PhDs, the doctors, the masters, the people that have been doing a craft for 20 years, 30 years are experts, right? And they can come on a video and say, hi, I'm an expert. I'm an expert. Listen to me. This is why I've been doing this for 30 years. That is one type of expert or a videographer, right? Some are not videographer, but someone who's going to be on camera. But if you're not that, it doesn't mean you don't have value because there's two other kinds of experts. Um, one is the journeyman. And the journeyman says, I'm on this path and I'm by no means an expert, but I'm going to bring you along with me so that we can discover these things together. And that's the first graders can lead kindergartners, right? Your clients don't have any idea how to buy real estate. I don't care if they're a real estate investor. I don't care if they bought and sold six homes. They don't understand the process the way you do, even if you're only in this business three months. You still know more about the real estate transaction than they do. So you're saying, hey, come along with me. I can help you. If we have questions, we'll get them answered together. So you can kind of host your videos as the journeyman hey, let's discover these things together, right? And then the third kind, so there's the expert, the journeyman. And hey, listen, if those of you that are unable because you're driving your kids to school, if you're unable to take notes, check out the other people that are on camera and reach out to them and say, hey, can I get your notes, right? I wanna make sure that you get this value as well. So reach out to the people that are able to take notes and make sure you get these notes afterwards. Um, the third kind is the reporter. And the reporter actually doesn't claim to have any expertise at all. What they do is they're data gatherers, right? If you want to help your buyer, we kind of act like a reporter when we send people a list from the MLS. Hey, here's what's available. Do I know about all of them? No, but I'm going to send them to you and we can talk about any of them you have questions. So you can be the reporter that just says, hey, I'm Debbie and I'm the local real estate expert and I'm here to talk to you about uh, what I discovered today, right? So I think we have that expertise bias that says we can't go on video because we're too new or we're, we're, we don't know that much, but you can assume either the journeyman or the reporter. I will say that there's a caveat about the expert. All of you did something before you got into real estate. All of you did something before you got into real estate. 
So use that expertise. You're bringing that expertise forward. You could say, you know, my years as a teacher, my years as a minister, my years as a uh, retail store manager, right? That's expertise that you can bring forward and you can almost get some street cred because you are an expert just in a different field, right? So you can pull that forward. So does anybody have any questions? Um, I see that um, Joe put the YouTube channel in there. Does anybody have any questions about the expert? Let's ask a different question. For those of you that have made videos, which of those personas have you explored? Yeah, Claire, I can see your hand up. All three, depending upon the personality of whom I'm with and what they need, because it's fitting their needs that I found was best. So sometimes I'll send them a video chat. Sometimes, you know, of course, we, we live in Florida about hurricanes, so I'll do something about hurricanes, you know, and then there's other times when, you know, you're shining the light on other people that are experts in certain areas. So all three. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone else? Yeah. Deep. Deep. Yeah. Morning, Debbie. How are you? Okay. Good. How are you? Uh, uh, I'm the same way. Uh, I'm not a news anchor like you. Uh, I become like a, a totally different individual. It's like my third image. I freeze. I don't speak. Um, I don't have my humor. I, I'm perfect on a Zoom. So I decided to inter uh, include my partner, work partner, my work wife into the videos. She comes in, asks me a question, and I answer. And that's really working. Yeah. I love that you push through your limitations, right? I have 127 videos on my YouTube channel, not themed, not themed, just because over the last 12 years or 15 years, I've made videos and they had to go somewhere. Half of them are unlisted, but I, but I started, right? I started before I ready. I, I made videos, not necessarily on the theme. The other thing I've spoken to real estate agents and other people that have created some sort of YouTube sort of presence is their persona revealed itself over time. Like the more videos you make, the more you kind of get your groove. And if you talk to any content video creators that teach people how to make videos, they make videos and teach people how to make videos, they all say that their early YouTube videos were not focused, were not themed, but the more they made, the more they kind of figured out who they were and how they wanted to present themselves. So their channel evolved, right? It started out in this direction and went on this direction, but you don't get that opportunity if you don't start making the videos. That's great, thanks for, um, thanks for sharing. So the next thing I really wanna talk about is keywords. And this is the part of this training that I really don't see anybody else talking about. So you really wanna pay attention here. I don't know if any of you have ever Googled the keywords. And, and if you know what a keyword, a keyword is a search term that someone would type into Google looking for an answer, right? It's someone that's got a problem that's looking for a solution. And so the what we're gonna talk about today is a way to use um, Google, who owns YouTube, we're gonna use the keyword algorithm to our advantage. And I really don't see anybody in real estate talking about this strategy, which means it's a really great strategy for you to use. Um, and that's around keywords. When I was actively selling real estate, I always would Google Sarasota real estate, real estate Sarasota, because I wanted to see who of my competitors is showing up on page one. And if they're showing up on page one, 90% of the time, it's because they've written a lot of content with the keyword Sarasota real estate in there, right? What I started to discover in my real estate career was when I was looking, for instance, for houses in a neighborhood, and I Googled, um, uh, Sarasota Country Club real estate, there was an agent that had written several blog posts using the words um, Sarasota Country Club, and they would show up on the first page. But here's a dirty little secret that you can use to your advantage, and I'll pay attention. 
because Google owns YouTube. Their goal is to show a video in every search result on the first page. So that means if no video shows up for Sarasota Country Club real estate, nobody, keywords everywhere. Yeah, John um, Wyland just posted, there's an app thingy, there's a Chrome extension called Keywords Everywhere um, that will help you in your keyword search. But you don't have to be a master at this. You can literally do your, just type it in. I, I have Keywords Everywhere. Um, and I use that often, you can type something. In, if no video shows up in the first page of Google, that means nobody's targeted that keyword as a video. And very often these bloggers, real estate agents that have dominated these keywords have not turned around and made a video. So that means that, video, that keyword is wide open. So let's talk about which videos to make. Now, should you make what Claire was talking about, you know, questions about real estate. If you get asked a question, what is escrow? Why, why do I have to give them money before I am closing on the house? Um, how long does closing take? You absolutely should make those videos, but that's not what this, this training is around. So let's talk about now that you understand the value of keywords, let's now talk about how, what sort of things can you go make videos about? Number one, retail. Every store in your town, I can promise you the owner of that store has not made a video. So if someone searches um, Bob's Aquarium, pretty sure Bob didn't make a video. So Bob doesn't have a video. Uh, I followed um, some, some real estate guys about 10 years ago. I don't even know if they're still around. They called themselves the real estate guys. Oh no, they called themselves the local guys. And 10 years ago, they were doing what I would call man on the street interviews with business owners. Hey, I'm Bob, I'm Larry, and we're here with John, the owner of the aquarium store. And they had a little microphone. Hey, John, how long have you owned the aquarium store? Da 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 da. And at the very end, they said, Hey, we also are real estate experts. And if you have any questions, reach out to us. But all they did, they called themselves the local guys. All they did was go around and interview business owners because none of them have videos. None. I'm saying none, maybe 20%. Um, so, so what happens is you start to dominate when anyone searches for that business name because Google wants to show a video. And if the shop owner doesn't have videos, you can potentially be the one that starts to show up. Now, I would say someone there, hey, my name's Debbie. I'm a local real estate expert. My passion is highlighting the, the business owners in our town. And this is Bob, the aquarium store owner. So let's go in. And of course, you're walking in and you're then doing an interview with, with Bob. These don't have to be high production. We're going to talk about the equipment you need. They literally can be a live front to back. You're standing in front. You've already set it up with Bob. You're going to walk in. He's in a good place with lighting in his restaurant, in his store. You start in the front wide shot of the building and, and you walk in and you literally go in and you talk to Bob and ask him questions about his business. By the way, Bob loves you for doing this because now what you do is you ask Bob to share it on his social media and you share it on your social media, you know. You can also do this with your favorites, right? You can all do, also do this with the top three best restaurants for Valentine's Day. You can recycle this. You can start to take clips of videos you made and compile them into a top three. So retail is one of them for keywords specifically, right? Second one is events. What events are in your town? Do you have a festival, an art show, a wine show, um, uh, anything like a pet show, a parade, any events? People Google that stuff. That they, You may not get any traction from it for a year, but if you're up there and you have it, and then every year you reshare it right before that event, you are starting to gain traction and Google is starting to learn that you own that keyword and you start to show up. 
So it's a really easy way um, to start getting in there, any of your local events. And number three, which is my absolute favorite, and if you, I would say one is retail. This would be number two. This third one I'm going to share is number two. Neighborhoods, condos, and developments. Neighborhoods, condos, and developments that are being built, right? You want to catch, not, not necessarily, condos or developments are being built. Even the big builders, Dr. Horton doesn't do video. They don't do video. So if you have a new Dr. Horton a, a neighborhood going in and you start a year early, going and standing on the dirt and saying, hey, now this is the reporter, right? The man on the, hey, this is Debbie. You know, I just want to highlight this Dr. Horton. I know it looks like dirt, but this is going to be the Dr. Horton development. There's going to be 27 homes in here, three two twos with pools. They're going to start at 257. Um, we're in the blah, blah school district, blah, blah, blah. That's the first one. Two weeks, a month later, you go out and you stand on the dirt again. Two weeks, a month later, you go out and you stand on the dirt again. In a year, you're going to have 10 to 12 to 24 videos around Dr. Horton in your neighborhood. Now, when you upload that, which we're not going to really talk about today, when you upload it to YouTube, you're going to want to make sure you have keywords in there so that the bots know what the video is about. Um, I'm in Sarasota. We have 10 to 20 condo complexes going up every year and nobody, I saw one guy in Miami do a condo, a luxury condo that was going up. And this guy's been talking, I don't even know if they're for sale yet. He's been talking about it for a year. Every week he's got videos of the artist's renderings, right? And but he's looking to dominate that search engine because once people start putting those search terms in Google and looking for them, guess who shows up? You. Standing in front of a neighborhood. I have friends here in town that had a Google video, a, 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 not a, a YouTube video start to rank because they stood in front of a neighborhood sign and said, this is Johnson's neighborhood and it's got 20. Didn't do anything, but just stand in front of the sign and talk about it. And they started to get leads from it because people were searching for that neighborhood and there was no videos for that neighborhood. Nobody on the board of their board had created any videos. So it's really a way, it is a, a longer term strategy, but it's videos that you can make that can really dominate you. New developments and condo complexes, oh my God, you can own that if you start making those videos. So, and you make it while you're driving by, like, listen, you're, you're driving around town, hop out and stand in front of the neighborhood sign and talk about it. Then go back and make a second video, go back and do research and make a second video that's just a talking head video that talks about that neighborhood without actually standing there. Or if you want to get super fancy, do a silent drive through of the neighborhood and then talk over it when you get back home. Hey, there's didn't know how many homes there were, but I like their sign. 600 homes in here, average price point, blah, blah, blah. But you've driven through the neighborhood and you overlay that. But that's sophisticated. So I'm about getting it down and dirty, right? Going in and, and going on site and doing that. So any questions or feedback from the three types of videos, retail, events, and neighborhoods, condos, and developments, any insights around that? Hey, Debbie, that was amazing information. And um, I would tell you, am I gonna put a plan together to do video? Probably not for those items, maybe something a little different. But here in our area, we have the Daytona 500, we have spring break, we have bike week, we have so many events that go on. Um, we have weekend concerts in, in, in the old, whatever, by the beach. Um, I do not see anybody taking that as an opportunity. And I know there's many of us, uh, many people on this call in our area uh, that really needs to probably drive towards that, that are driven on their real estate business. And um, again, thank you for your time for being here uh, as a high, you know, highly demanded coach. I know your time is valuable and thanks for pouring into us. Yeah, so listen, real quick, equipment, camera, um, 
um, audio, um, I have a wired mic or a wireless microphone that you take with you and you. That's the three pieces of equipment you need to make videos. Your, your phone, video, I mean, um, your phone, a microphone, and you. A little tip is to be aware of the lighting, right? Be aware of the lighting when you're shooting video. Um, and then the last thing is where to share. Where to share it. You email it to your clients. Think of it as a video newsletter, right? You can email it to your whole database. Hey, shot a cool video. For, for this thing that I found in town that I like. Obviously social media, but the real key is to upload it to YouTube with um, keywords so that Google can find it. You know what I mean? But for equipment, your phone, some audio, either Bluetooth, your, your, your headphones for your iPhone, right? Even if it's wired, yes. Like, just do it. So let me ask you, how many people are going to make a video this week? One, two, wait, those look like the same hands. <laughs> wait, I want to see some new hands. Okay, I see some new hands. Hopefully, I see a yes from John. Okay, yeah, 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 I see some more. Great. Listen, then share them with your friends and say, hey, can I get feedback? Now, yeah, so I see Vanessa, Wanda, Lorena. Um, share them with your friends. Like if you want to get better, share them with people and say, hey, critique me. It's not rocket science. Any questions? Hey, Debbie, it's Claire. Hey, Claire. Thank you again. I put in the chat, um, I have been going like Facebook Live, and if I'm hearing you correctly, it's better to upload it to YouTube with those keywords to get the largest impact. Is that correct? Well, Facebook likes you to do live videos absolutely on their platform. I'm not saying that you shouldn't do them. What I'm you should probably continue to do that. But if you're looking to, because because my goal is for you to get business in your town. And if you want to get business in your town, a secondary option is to upload these sort of videos that would be keyword rich onto YouTube, right? That doesn't mean you can't upload it to YouTube and then share it to Facebook. But in order for you to get the Google juice, Google can't hop inside Facebook and grab juice out of that, right? The only where Google can get juice from is from YouTube. So I, I would say both, continue the lives. But if you, but, but definitely pick a keyword strategy and maybe only pick one. Maybe you say, I'm going to go do all the retail stores because by the way, they don't have video. They don't, right? They don't, none of them. And by the way, they're super grateful that you want to come in and highlight them and share them with your 5,000 Facebook followers and your 2,000 email. I'm going to email it out to everybody I know. I have 2,000 people on my email list and I'm going to share it with my 5,000 Facebook followers. They're super impressed. And then when they share it on their page, now all the people that are in their world get find out that you're a realtor and then you did something really nice for that for them and they like that right a stabilizer or a selfie stick yeah i do i do usually travel in my car with a little one of these because it allows me to just put my phone up and prop it somewhere so that it's not so that it's stable and it's got the little bendy hooks right you can be really fancy. I mean, how big is a tripod for your car? It, it's, this, it's this wide. You can throw that in your trunk with all your other stuff and then always have uh, that with you. But I don't want you to make this so complex that you don't go and do it, right? Improving the quality of the microphone is really important. Um, making sure you're lighting, but you can stand in front of a window and get decent lighting. You don't have to travel with lights. Um, yeah, so yeah, I love that. What keywords you recommend? What I would kind of look at is I might do some searches like Tom was saying, the Indy 500 for places in your town that, um, and see, are there any videos that are showing up on page one? Um, and I would absolutely Google your restaurant names, your retail store names in your town. A restaurant's really popular because people look them up to get Google maps, right? How to get there. 
right? Maybe look at menus, look at Yelp reviews, right? So look for ones that don't have videos if you wanna be really strategic, but there's nothing wrong with picking your favorite ones and just going and doing it and getting practice. Even if there is a video for your favorite restaurant, there's no harm. And by the way, it's a, it's a dual thing. If you tell the owner of the restaurant, you wanna come in and make a video for them, they are super grateful. And now you're building a relationship as a real estate expert in your town. And that person has the potential to then send you business, right? It's double duty when you're interviewing someone that owns a retail store. And I would argue that even if the video never goes where, the value of you standing in front of a store owner and, and making a video for them and sharing it on social media they're grateful to you. That's a, that's a that's a lead generation strategy. You could say, you know what? I'm just going to go make video, and I'm just going to go. Oh, I'm going to go interview store owners in my town. That's my lead. 100. percent By the way, you get to talk to 20 people in a day because there'll be people in the restaurant when you're doing the video. You can lead generate through all of them. If your goal is to talk to 20 people a day about real estate, which by the way should be your goal. It's, it should be your goal to talk to 20 people about real estate. Going into a restaurant or a store increases your chance that you can have conversations. So you could become, uh, you know, your lead generation strategy is simply to make videos with, by the way, you can also go to the economic development committee in your town and make a video. You can go to charities in town and make a video. You can go to the condo boards and make videos. You can, you can go and interview anything that's going on in your town that someone might search for. Keywords Everywhere is the, is the app that somebody shared. I forget who shared it. Um, it, but very intuitive. Every time you do a search on Google, it'll kind of give you ideas of other keywords you can use and also how those keywords rank. I just don't want to make this too um, high level. I do a search for the retail, the store that you want to interview and just check and make sure there's no video on page one of Google. And if there was no page, then I'm going to um, um go and make that video. Now I see Vanessa has a hand up and Lorena has a hand up. I wasn't sure if you had questions or your hand was just up answering a previous question. No, I guess not. Okay, cool. Um, I don't see anybody doing this. Uh, I see one person, Jenny Wallach out in the Midwest does this every day. And by the way, she uploads them to Instagram. Hey, I'm here at the physical therapy place. This is Barbara. She's my physical therapist. She's amazing. Barbara, how long have you been a physical therapist? She has, she's going about her day. She just interviews people, right? It's, 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 it's so easy that people don't do it. But it's, 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 it's genius. By the way, um, Daryl, I'm sorry I shared that tip. <laughs> Daryl and I had talked about this before as a strategy for lead generation. And I said, it's Ninja and, and nobody really knows about it or talks about it. Um, but I just, now it's not Ninja anymore. Well, it is still Ninja. It's fun too, Debbie, meeting people and talk and they love it. People love when you ask, can I highlight your business? Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Who's going to say no? Listen, I'm, 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 I'm interviewing local business owners post pandemic to see if I can help give their business a boost. Cause mm. I'm going to share it on social media. I'm going to share it on YouTube, which, you know, you can share them the strategy that videos rank and Google wants to show videos on the first page. So my goal is to highlight your business so that you can get more traction. Who would say no to that? You will Debbie, there's a, there's a question that Debbie Bills and myself, um, I think that I'm confused on when you are using keywords everywhere. Is that an app? You said a Chrome add on. Could you explain that? Well, so I, I don't, I don't specifically remember how it got onto my computer. <laughs> um, but, but I think in Chrome, you can add, have all these extensions on a browser, right? Where that, for instance, I have color picker. If I want to know 
somebody's app or somebody's um, logo, what colors they're using in their logo, because I really like the combination. You can use this Chrome extension that, you know, that you that is in my browser that somehow allows me to take the color dropper and lay it over there and it will tell me what the hex code is right wow. so keywords everywhere is like an extension that you that i add to my browser and i can't tell you exactly where to go to the extension in the browser to find it but i'm pretty sure if you search keywords everywhere chrome extension you would get more information about what that is and how to add that. Now for other browsers, if you don't use that, um, yeah, if you don't use, if you use a different browser, I'm not sure if Keywords Everywhere has extensions for that. Here's what, you know, Claire, I know you're making a lot of video or, uh, uh, already, which is fine if you're experienced in video. If, if you're not a big videographer, don't even look it up. It, it's a great thing when you start to really want to get purposeful about your reach of your videos, completely not necessary to start going out and interviewing people. Don't allow not understanding keywords everywhere to hold you back from going and making videos if you're not really making them regularly already. And if you're making them, that's a great addition to um, plus your video content creation. When creating a YouTube video, are you able to enter keywords to use? Oh, vidIQ. Yeah, vidIQ is another Chrome extension for all the keywords. So when you're making a video, you might wanna add all the keywords that are, could be similar to the one that you're targeting. And there's a lot of different extensions that help you figure out other than the name of the restaurant what other keywords you can add. But again, don't allow that to slow you down. If you're only going to use the keyword of the business, that's enough to get started, right? You can always go back later to videos and add extra keywords when you get a better handle on, on using them and, and adding them. Just like on Instagram, if you're adding those hashtags, hashtags and keywords are the same, right? You're adding those hashtags underneath your content so that people that doing searches for them might be able to discover you. It's the same thing with keywords. And Debbie put a link. I wanted, to, link uh, I wanted to, to let everybody know whoever downloads the keyword uh, everywhere today, you can buy credits, it's very cheap. Uh, they go by weird numbers, depends on a search, uh, they charge you points. But please, please, when you download on your Chrome, shut it off because just imagine how many days, how many times a day do you go search for something? And every time you use that search, it's gonna charge you. So just put a timer on yourself that you're gonna do research for your uh, uh, videos, click it on, then you do the homework then shut it off. Very simple. Yes, great tip, thanks Deep. And again though, don't allow using that app or something that costs money hold you back from walking into your favorite restaurant today and asking the owner if you can make a video, right? And if you need <clears> help <throat> with the keywords, call some of the experts on here and say, hey, I made my first video and I'm uploading it, right? We're a team here. Or ask Tom's dog, because it looks like he probably would know some answers. Oh, Christmas time dog. <laughs> Right? Ask your peers. That's the value of this group here is that we don't have to become geniuses alone. Ask your peers for help. They'll help you willingly, even if you're their competition. Because if we all get better, the whole boat rises and there's enough for everyone. And you can't take my business and I can't take your business. So we can help each other. That's why we love GPS is because we recognize that sharing our inner secrets does not cut into our pie. It actually makes our pie bigger, right? Hey, hey Debbie, um, just want to bring up a quick note too. I just had another aha when you mentioned, so we're in the uh, uh, holiday season and um, we have the biggest shopping day Friday, but also, you know, there is the local um, stores and mom and pop stores in restaurants that can be highlighted. And my what an opportunity to start like, like I live in New Smyrna Beach. So like we have all the old town of mom and pop shops just doing a video up and down that road, what it can do and what the impact it can make for your page. 
and yeah. for the consumer. Yeah. The businesses. Small Business Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, without COVID, without Black Friday, business owners are still super grateful that you're going to share this video with your your social sphere and your email list. Any other uh, questions or takeaways from today? I've got a question. Good morning, Debbie. Um, morning, Frank. I, uh, I've, this year, 2021, I've flipped houses in about, it's been five counties. And uh, so how would you use video on more of a macro since, um, or maybe I should hit select businesses in each of those counties, I'm not sure. But I love the interview of the business owners. I'm just trying to think through how to do that in all the places that we're flipping. So there is, there is, you know, and keywords everywhere and vidIQ, there are some tools that can help us do research on, for instance, if I was going to make one restaurant video in each town, I might look for the restaurant that A, doesn't have video already, and B, is searched more than other restaurants, right? So you're looking for search count because now you, the more people that are doing a search for that thing, the, um, the more likelihood, you know, the more traction you're gonna get, right? So there is a way to start ranking, which videos do I wanna make in order? In the, in the fact that you cover five counties, Frank, I might look more at the geography or the topography, right? What's, what development is happening in those towns that might be searched on Google, right? So if you have new home development or commercial development or things like that, I, I might focus more on the geography of the town because you, you cover all those counties, right? Thanks, Tom. Um, does that make sense, Frank? Is that helpful? Yeah. Any other questions or takeaways? I have one. It was from the very beginning. And as usual, Debbie, you just have a way of saying something that's a loving smack to my face. <laughs> <laughs> but this Boom. Is, earlier you said like, Hey, uh, you might not like how you sound or look on video, but that's how we see and hear you. I was like, come on, Tiffany, get off your ass and just make the video. So thank you so much for saying it that way, because you're right. You're a hundred percent right. And that's my ego getting in the way. And I just got to shove it away. I got to just yeah. go. So and I can authenticity on, on YouTube and Google is winning today. If you see your favorite advertisers that advertise to you on Facebook, um, I saw a big um, a marketing guy make a blurry video like this. Hey, like literally I'm like, does he know his video is blurry? And then I went, oh, strategy. Because the goal awesome. is to stop the scroll, right? It's to stop the scroll. He did a black and white video. Hey, but, what? But if you can get people to stop and pay attention, now this is video ads on Facebook, right? But still, authenticity wins. I, don't, I like to say, make the skeleton dance. So if you have a, a horribly featured wall in your house, Put a painting on it and highlight it. Make the skeleton dance. Hey, I'm Debbie. And you know, I've been a real estate professional for like 10 years. And I know you all want more video. I don't know that I'm all that great in video, but I'm going to be start making videos because I really want to share information that's important with me to you. What's wrong with that on video? What's wrong with saying, hey, I haven't made a lot of videos, but hey, Welcome to my new show. Um, we're going to do this together, right? Make the skeleton dance instead of hide away from it. I, 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 off topic, how long you've been in real estate? I don't care how long, you could say feels like forever. That's one of my, <laughs> I don't care if you've been in real estate for a day, you could say it feels like forever. Um, but the other thing is you're not an idiot. 
You bring your expertise of whatever you, you know what? I was a teacher for 10 years and I thought I would bring all my teaching skills to real estate because I really like helping people and, and, and moving them forward. So I've only been doing real estate six months, three months, a year, two years, three years, but I bring all that experience over. Why can't you say that? Make the skeleton dance. I'm new in real estate, but I'm bringing all my genius from before to where I am right now. That's awesome. I love it. Any other takeaways? Morning, Debbie. How are you? Hey, Daryl. <coughs> Jonathan. <laughs> You're muted, Daryl. You're muted. You oh, unmuted. Because it's not Daryl. <laughs> I, oh, I hey, John. Just, hey, I was just going to say, uh, pick up on something that you were saying about when, when you're doing the video um, that, <clears throat> you know, if you're more yourself and stop trying to be the, the person you think you need to be on video, you will get so many more hits and so many more follows. Um, yeah, what you just said about authenticity, it's, it's the truest thing. People want to see what you really are like, not what they think you're like or what you think they should think you're like, what you really are. They don't necessarily want to see you all made up and dressed up going to show houses. They want to see you running out of the house with a cup of coffee, spilling it everywhere in your flip flops and your, and your pajamas going, hey, I got to get the kids to school, but uh, let's talk houses later. Click, boom. They, you'll get a better hit rate on something like that than you will. Hey, look at my house. It's three bedrooms, two bathrooms, and you're all done up and you're doing your thing. And, nah, 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 nah. and while, yeah, you look great and it's terrific. That's really not going to get you to the top of the pile. What people really want to see are two things you really need to remember. And, and this is just my personal experience. I've spoken to a lot of people about video, but two things, keep it short and keep it direct and be uh, <clears throat> right. Those two things are important. And if you're honest and genuine in your video, you'll get more hits on it. Stop trying to recreate the wheel. Trust me. I, I tried to do it for years and I couldn't figure it out until I came here. And then it was like, don't be stupid. Just be simple. Like simple literally sense. hold hold your camera, right? Hold, yeah, like hold, you were saying, the guy's, the, 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 guys, the guy's doing this, right? Hey, guys, can you see me? <laughs> <laughs> you know, or, or, or even this one, upside down, right? Whatever you do, it's just going to bring you more to the top of the pile. And also, people are going to call you or, or send you text messages. One of the things about video that people don't understand is <clears throat> it, it's exactly what you said you need to stay on the feed, right? They, all these sites want you to stay on the feed. In order to generate the power of the lead, you have to keep them engulfed in you, right? Do it in black and white, do it upside down. Do it three times the speed. Somebody's gonna make a comment to you and that's gonna generate more information in your feed. And then people are gonna read your comments and then they want to add a comment and then it's just gonna keep going to the top. So if you do something a little off center, it'll more than likely gets you the result that you're looking for. Stop trying to recreate the wheel. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to tell you another ninja trick. Any of you, I think all of you are probably on my video email list. Has anybody out here seen the videos that I make with my partner, Curtis? No, no which means that Debbie doesn't love all of us guys. And I'm oh, for one and big man. subscribed. Yeah, well, to wait, to my personal channel or to my business channel? The sales team coach, the sales team coach on YouTube is, um, is, my, is my business channel. But I'm gonna tell you, this is, like, this is like really insider secrets. So really pay attention. YouTube measures how long people watch your video. So start training your email watchers to watch the whole thing by putting bloopers at the end. I put bloopers at the end, well, our editors put bloopers at the end of our YouTube videos. Um, um, every video, because YouTube likes it if they watch if they watch all the way to the end, they think that it's good video content. So gain the system and put bloopers at the end or some sort of funny thing that you do at the end of your video that makes people watch to the end. 
do a funny sign off or put a funny picture, funny, funny picture of a dog or add bloopers. So we use um, a company to help edit our videos. We make raw footage and we send it um, to viral because guess why? Because we knew we should make videos and we weren't making them. So we write a check to a company that forces us to make two videos a month and they keyword it and edit it. If you have questions, I do get street cred. If you have questions about hiring someone to edit your videos for you, please message me because I do get brownie points for viral. Um, if you, yeah, if you, um, if you want more information, reach out to Tiffany if you don't have my contact information. Um, and I can connect you. Make YouTube shorts. You know, Lorena, that's a really good tip. And I don't really, I, I don't really know a lot about YouTube shorts. So that's that's content for another class. You want their Jonathan? Actually, I, actually YouTube shorts are the competitor to, to uh, TikTok. Okay, there you go. But it's by YouTube, and they're no more than a minute, maybe two minutes long at the most. They are hot. They actually YouTube is really, really pushing it because they're in hot competition with TikTok and and um and Instagram. Yeah. So I see. So, thank you, thank you, Lorena, for for sharing that. And I see Evelyn. What about TikTok videos? All of these strategies work. You have to learn what the algorithm is for that particular social media strategy. You have to know what what that algorithm wants. And if you're willing to learn and dive in there, then you absolutely should do this. This is kind of a short down and dirty way to start ranking that you can make quickly. And Jonathan, I got your message about um, information. I'll reach out to you, Jonathan, after the call um, um, and, and, and connect with you. Um, Thanks, well, Steph. here, I'll put my, I'll put my info. So, um, um, and Debbie just dropped one of the first bombs that she ever blew my mind with when she said everything works. That is what made me fall works. in love with Debbie is that she was like, hey, stop chasing these squirrels. Videos work, door knocking works, cold calling works, mailing works. It all works. Just pick one. And I was like, yeah. oh, thank you. <laughs> what, is it that, what is it that Fred says? Fear, right? Fear mm -hmm. gets in your way. Fear pretends to be your friend. It tells you that you're okay. You don't have to do this. That not bullshit. Do it. Just do it. Rip the bandaid well, off the and thing. just do it. Don't do one for six months and say it doesn't work. If you're gonna do TikTok, <laughs> learn about the algorithm. Learn, <coughs> watch other people become a master. And I always and talk about the three-legged stool, which is. Pick three lead generation source. One has to be your sphere of influence. If you don't like talking to your friends and asking for real estate, get over it and figure out how to do that because it's the best way to insulate yourself against whatever comes down the pike is your sphere. Get over it. That has to be one. But two and three can be whatever you want and they all work. You were going to say something, Jonathan? Deb, Deb, Tony DeFalco, I wanted to say thank you for this call. Wow, amazing. But guys, that is it. And you... I, I was going to jump in just before you said that six months, I see agents do things for six days and say, this doesn't work. This doesn't work. This doesn't work. Guys, mail is very difficult to break through, but Paul Saperstein will close 225 listings this year from mail alone. But Paul said on every neighborhood he signs up for, it's a 36 month lease payment. If he is not willing to mail for 36 months to see if there's results, he would never start mailing the community. And six months, really a six day, six minute. Be consistent, momentum is everything in this business. Be a master at that one thing, build the next thing. And like she said, you can't have 17 legs on your stool and be great at all of them. You really can't. Pick your three and run with it, guys. Deb, I got a, a good suggestion for everybody who doesn't know what to share, what not to post. We should watch Jessica uh, Vasquez. I'm going to share her uh, Instagram in, our, in the chat. She just has a conversation with herself. It is so easy to watch. 
as if she's talking to somebody across from it, having a full-blown conversation with the second Jessica. It's so simple how easy she does it. I, I'm trying to do that. I can't figure it out. So good job, Jessica. Keep it up. Well, Deep Jessica talks to herself all the time, so it's pretty easy for her to do that. But you, no you're, absolutely, you that too. you're absolutely right. You have to take away, the, forget how you sound because it's not how you sound. Remember that. The way you sound to yourself at, uh, on, on a video or a tape is not the way you sound in real life. It's not the way other people hear you. You have a filter in your brain that changes the way you speak, right? So <clears throat> just do it. Forget about how you think you sound. Forget about how you think you look. Forget that you look like a 400-pound gorilla or, or, or a two-ounce thimble. You just need to do it. Just do it. Forget, stop letting fear get in your way. Start doing the videos and all of a sudden people are going to be like, hey, I saw your video. That was amazing. And, and something inside you is going to be like, that was awesome. Keep going. Yeah. Keep going. Don't stop. And, and, and my advice to you is pick a platform. Don't try and do all of them. You can right. forward to all of them at the same time, but focus on one platform specifically. If you're going to do YouTube and you're going to do YouTube shorts, do YouTube. Don't do Instagram and Facebook. You could always forward it to them, right? If yeah. you're going to do Facebook, stay on Facebook. Don't, don't do YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, WhatsApp. You'll be spending your whole day doing videos and get no work done. Yeah. And oh, by the way, of the people on this call, less than 10% of them will go make video. So it's wide open. Now, hopefully that is, that is challenging you all to be like, well, I'm going to make one. I'm going to make one. Good. But less than 10% will. We get back together a year from now and you're going to say, oh, I should be making video. I should be making video. I'm not making video. Yeah. It's just, I feel like it's still wide open for real estate agents. If you want to pick a platform that nobody's really using at a high level, pick YouTube because agents just aren't doing it. 20% of agents do, 80% of buyers and sellers say they want an agent that makes video. So Debbie, I got a, one more question because this runs down to business and what's not on my calendar doesn't exist. When you're scaling this, how much time are you spending each day or do you how do, how do you put this into your business? I'm probably starting with a goal of a video a week. And I'm not attaching results to that. I'm attaching the action, right? If I do the work, the results will come. So I'm, I'm going to do one. My goal would st I would start because even if I only did one a week in a year, I'll have 52. Right. Let's not make this a big sort of complex thing that we're doing in addition. Now, could you make a commitment to make two a week or three a week? You could. But what I find is if we overcommit, we lose we lose momentum. Right. What can you execute consistently? If it's not one a week, can you do one every two weeks? If it's not one every two weeks, can you do one a month? Commit to something, but commit to doing it no matter what. Commit to the action, not to the result. We get, we go, well, is this one going to rank? And I got to do research. No, just make one. Have your phone and your microphone in the car. And the next time you walk into a retail store, see if you can find the manager and say, hey, I'd like to come back and do a video. Is the owner here? I'd like to be able to interview them. Can I, can I set that up? Get it scheduled. And then just be consistent about doing it. The What I would say, the perfection of it and the momentum of it can come down the road. When you're, when you're used to making them consistently, you can start to get better and be more strategic, but don't allow your lack of strategy to prevent you from starting. You know, I did put my email and contact information in there. If you want information about viral, email me or text me, tell me who you are and, and, I, will, and I will connect you. Because I now I have too many requests to actually follow everybody that's asking. <laughs> well, thank you, Debbie, so much. Start for where you are. All of us. Yeah. Start where you are. This is awesome. Thank you so much. We really do appreciate you. And guys, don't worry. I love Debbie. I know you guys love Debbie. I've already emailed her while she was talking to ask her for December. 
to see when she's available then. So don't worry, we'll have her back. <laughs> I'm on top of that. Um, any other questions before we let Debbie go? I'm gonna kick it off to after party here in just a minute. Going once, going twice. Sold to the after party, here we go. Hey, More. Tiffany, can I get yeah. this recording? Absolutely.